is Jordan Lehman. He was a normal infant until the symptoms of neurodegenerative disease began to show. When he was nine months old, his parents noticed that he could no longer do the things he used to, like sit up straight, walk or crawl, play with his toys, and hear or see well. Shortly after Jordan's first birthday, he was diagnosed with Tay-Sachs. So what is Tay-Sachs? Tay-Sachs is an autosomal recessive genetic disease. People who are carriers aren't afflicted, but two parents who are carriers can have a child who has Tay-Sachs. The probability that two carrier parents will have a child with Tay-Sachs is 25%. The disease inhibits an enzyme called beta-hexaminidase A, or HEX-A. HEX-A breaks down a lipid called the GM2 gangliocide, which builds up sugar as a byproduct of hydrolysis in the gray matter of the brain. Because the disease affects HEX-A, GM2 builds up, as well as the sugar it produces, leading to the damage and death of neurons. Infants afflicted with this degenerative disease show symptoms between three and six months and rarely live past childhood. Symptoms and effects of the disease include seizures, mental disabilities, paralysis, hearing, and vision loss. Before 1880, Tay-Sachs was an unnamed disease that caused the mortality of many infants of Eastern European Jewish ancestry. It was later named for two doctors who made important connections between the neurodegenerative de disease and its symptoms. In 1881, a British ophthalmologist, Warren Tay, discovered a patient with a cherry red spot in the retina of their eyes. This spot is a warning sign of certain metabolic neurological disorders. A few years later, Bernard Sachs, a neurologist from New York, would discover the cellular changes of the disease. In 1969, Dr. Shintaro Okada and Dr. John S. O'Brien published the discovery of the HEX-A deficiency in Tay-Sachs. In the late 1900s, the gene responsible for Tay-Sachs was identified, and now over 100 mutations of the gene have been found. Despite the many mutations, researchers are working hard on treatment and a cure. Remember Jordan? After being diagnosed with Tay-Sachs at 13 months, his parents were able to meet with Dr. Joanne Kurtzberg, who is the Chief of Blood and Marrow Transplants and Pediatrics at Duke University. Jordan was the third child to receive a blood marrow transplant that used umbilical cord stem cells. He went through 10 days of intense chemotherapy and received the transplant. Jordan's body can now produce HEX-A and he no longer has Tay-Sachs. However, Jordan lives with the effects of Tay-Sachs from before his treatment. He had a blood infection, surgery for hip dysplasia, and is confined to a wheelchair. He uses a feeding tube and suffers from hearing and vision problems. There are many other areas of research regarding a cure for Tay-Sachs. Scientists at Duke are now trying to cure Tay-Sachs in fetuses. The trials involve injecting the fetuses with stem cells specialized as a substitute for HEX-A. These stem cells break down GM2 and may be able to combat Tay-Sachs before it makes any permanent damage. Gene therapy has been tested on Jacob sheep, sheep that originated in biblical times. In 1999, Texas farmers Fred and Joan Horak noticed two of their lambs seemed to have some sort of nervous system disorder. They realized it was a kind of inherited disease and kept it in their flock to monitor. After consulting a veterinarian pathologist at A&M and a doctor at New York University Medical Center, it was concluded that the sheep had Tay-Sachs. Now the flock and affected sheep are being used for gene therapy experiments. Current clinical trials are also testing a new drug called Miglostat, which inhibits the enzyme that synthesizes glycosphingolipids, 
glycolipids that are components of GM2. A ketogenic diet, a low-carb, high-fat diet, is adopted with the Miglostat dosage to help prevent the seizures that often occur due to the effects of the disease. Because the trial has not been completed, there is little information about the success rate of Miglostat therapy for Tay-Sachs patients. Sandoff's, a similar neurodegenerative disease, has been successfully treated with Miglostat and a ketogenic diet, so there is hope that this therapy will work. Because this area of research and treatment is still very experimental, many ethical questions come into play. Although Jordan's life was saved by his cord blood transplant, his quality of life was greatly impacted. People debate whether it is humane to let a person live even though they have extensive physical and mental disabilities. There is also controversy over whether or not to bring a baby into the world if the parents know the fetus has Tay-Sachs. Jordan Lehman's case was an exception, not the rule. Jordan had to endure numerous tests before he was even treated, and there are many instances when such treatments have failed. Doctors and scientists continue to advise prospective parents to get tested to see if they are carriers of the Tay-Sachs disease and continue to research for a cure. If you want to donate to Tay-Sachs Research, visit www.ntsad.org. Thanks for watching. watching.